This is an Air Venturi Avenger bullpup in 25 caliber. And um, I've never had a bullpup. And what happened was my nephew asked me about these. He was thinking of getting one. And then I got a couple other people started asking me about them. I thought, well, I better find out what this uh, Avenger bullpup is all about. So I picked one up, and what we're going to do today is take a look at it and uh, go through some of the features, see how it shoots. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at some of the features. Uh, first, this is kind of a nice truck gun, I think. It's only about 33 inches long. It weighs in at about uh, six and a half pounds, which isn't too bad. And of course, the scope, but we'll add a little bit to that. Okay, let's start in the front here. This is the uh, cover for your uh, fill nipple here. And it just takes a standard uh, foster fitting. Everybody's got them. You don't have to get a special uh, uh, fitting for this, an adapter. Okay, this has a whole bunch of Picatinny stuff on it. You can see the scope rail here is a Picatinny scope rail. And it's got places here you can mount a bipod, put a light on either side of this, or whatever you want to put on there. So it's got a lot of options if you're into the uh, aftermarket stuff to to stick on here. This is regulated by the regulator here and it's set for the 25 caliber here at 2900 PSI which is a pretty high. I mentioned it goes to 4350 PSI. This is the gauge in the tube itself so you have some idea of where you're at. It's a little tiny gauge and the numbers are real close together. The lines are real close together but it gives you an approximation of, of where you're at in your fill. Well, coming back a little further, you can see we have the caulking lever here. It's a side caulker and the safety here, which is a little odd for me having never owned a bullpup because normally your finger is up here by the trigger and you would expect a safety to be somewhere here handy. In this case, you have to bring your hand back here take the safety off, go all the way back. And the same thing when you uh, caulk it. Come back, caulk it, hand goes back here. Uh, I don't think that's a big deal, but uh, we'll see. This is a cheek uh, piece, and uh, it's adjustable. It's got a little detent in there, so you can move it forward and back uh, to the place where you get the best uh, weld between your cheek and the gun. And then the uh, butt here is also adjustable. You can adjust it down or adjust it up or, you know, you have different places you can move it to to suit your uh, individual preferences there. Well, we turned it over here to take a look at the underbelly. Uh, we've got the trigger here has two adjustments. The one in the front is for the weight of the trigger pull, and we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. The one in back is for the travel, so you can set those two, and I, I've seen people kind of rave about the uh, trigger on this and how light it is, and, uh, and I guess I prefer a fairly light trigger, but one that is predictable. And in my way of thinking, a good trigger is one that is adjustable so that you can set it the way you like it, but I can set it the way I like it too. And that adjustability uh, is built in to make it uh, work for any number of different people and their own preferences. Moving further back, here's a couple of ports. I think you can see those. And the one in front here is for adjusting the regulator. And there's a procedure that's in the uh, manual that goes through how to do that. The one in back is a degassing port. And it says in the, <clears throat> it says in the manual to use a two and a half millimeter wrench. But I find that the two and a half doesn't work. The two and, they, they provide you with one here, but it works. For the trigger adjustments, it doesn't work for the degassing. For the degassing, you need a three millimeter, at least on mine. 
and you would just put it in. It says don't turn it more than two turns. Well, that's about an eighth of a turn right there, and you can see it, it uh, degasses pretty quick. And then back of that, we have places for you to put your spare magazines. They fit in there, something like that. And they're pretty secure. You can pull them out, but they'll stay in there pretty good. Mine came with a single shot tray. So the first thing we wanted to check on this gun was the trigger pull. And uh, so we did that. It came out really consistent at about 2.3 ounces, straight out of the box, no adjustment, nothing. And as I mentioned earlier, you can adjust the pull weight of the trigger and also the length of travel. But this is, uh, this is straight out of the box, 2.3 ounces. And then using... Um, the JSB Exact. We took a look at how many shots you could, might expect to get with this gun. Again, right out of the box. We started at the maximum fill pressure of 4,350 PSI and shot down to uh, right about uh, 40 shots. It started going off the regulator, but even then it wasn't much. It went from 914 feet per second to 908 roughly. And so you get about um, five good magazines with the uh, eight shot 25 caliber magazines. Now looking at each individual pellet, we tried the H&N Field Target Trophy. Uh, they came out at uh, a little over a thousand feet per second. The JSB Exact King about 914. The RWS Superdome's at about 841. And the Kodiak Match came in at about 846 feet per second. And the energy ranged from uh, about 46 foot-pounds of energy up to about 49 with the most uh, foot-pounds of energy by the uh, Kodiak Match, which is also uh, the heaviest pellet. Well, the next thing we looked at was how loud the gun is. And frankly, it's pretty loud. Um, I really didn't feel comfortable shooting this in the backyard here in the suburbs. Uh, the LC Peak, which is kind of the loudest sound, was about 128 decibels, which um, it's getting up there. And by comparison, you can see that um, a garbage disposal, typical in your kitchen, is about 70 to 85 decibels. The bullpup was 128, and a firecracker or a 22 uh, Ruger 1024 was about 140. So it's definitely loud, but there are things you can do uh, to reduce that sound. You can get uh, an aftermarket adapter and uh, an aftermarket uh, moderator, and that'll supposedly, I haven't tried it, but should quiet it right down. Okay, well I mentioned that this is loud, and you're going to hear that uh, while we're shooting to see if you know, the accuracy on this gun. Uh, and this is a, at a different location out in the woods, so I'm not bothering anybody. Okay, there it is. You can hear it kind of on the loud side. Uh, and uh, I would recommend if a person bought a gun like this, either that you're going to shoot it somewhere where the sound doesn't matter, or get the adapter and uh, get an aftermarket uh, suppressor. In terms of accuracy, I was expecting big things because I'd, I'd heard these are pretty darn accurate. And so I took a shot with the JSB and uh, started out pretty good and then started wandering around a little bit on me. And this is at 30 yards. I was a little bit disappointed in the JSBs. And you can see here that, um, well, it was about an inch and a half, something like that the size of the groups, uh, center to center. Okay, so on to the H&N uh, field target trophies. And none of them were outside of the uh, target, but I was kind of disappointed. I thought they would do better. Next were the RWS Superdomes, and they were just awful. You know, I looked at those first couple of groups I got, and I thought, well, I, you know, I'm not a master marksman or anything, but I'm not that bad. So I got to thinking about what what the issue might be 
and um, I ended up picking up my Benjamin Marauder for comparison and this is the one I use for a field target when I shoot field target and I throw it up and my eye pretty much goes right into the scope my head is pretty straight up and down uh, something about the way the scope is uh, in relation to the cheek piece but with the Avenger I have to kind of tilt my head over on its side to get a good look through the scope and I tried adjusting these different things to make it better as best I could and, and it did get better but I still have to kind of flip my head on its uh, side there so after all that I changed um, my hold uh, on the Avenger and the groups tightened right up well you'll see And so with just a little adjustment to how I shot, you can tell the RWS Superdome's tightened right up about a half inch uh, center to center. This is at 30 yards and also the Kodiaks. Kodiaks probably a little better. Okay, let's wrap this up. What I didn't like about this gun is first of all, it's loud. I didn't feel comfortable shooting it here in the yard. Now you can take care of that if you want to spend a few bucks and don't mind extending the front of this gun out uh, I don't know how far six eight inches whatever it is that'll quiet it right down another thing I didn't care for was the fact that I had to kind of tilt my head in a certain way in order to get a good sight picture through the scope and that too is you know it's just something that if you have this gun you may run into that that um, you may have to change your technique a little bit uh, to get the good accuracy like we we ended up getting and I guess the other thing is it's got to be filled to 4,350 PSI which is a lot uh, most uh, PCPs are 3,000 or 3,300 something like that that means hand pumping is probably out of the question and you're probably going to have to get a compressor uh, although there are a lot of uh, inexpensive compressors out there on the market now that will fill to 4,500 PSI. Uh, things that I liked is it's compact. It's a nice size. Uh, it's got lots of power, 45, 49 uh, foot-pounds of energy. You get a lot of shots. We got uh, five magazines with very little variation in uh, feet per second. Um, it's accurate. You know, we were shooting half-inch groups once we figured out how to, to uh, consistently hold it and aim uh, it's almost like a Swiss army knife uh, it's got so many adjustments and things you can do or, or maybe Legos it's a Lego gun because you can fiddle with this and tweak that and do all kinds of adjustable things to get it just the way that uh, you like it and then finally I guess the biggest uh, thing I like about it is it's not that expensive. I mean, it's super powerful, accurate, all that stuff we talked about, and it's $400. It's a pretty good value, I'd say. So anyway, that's uh, my take on it, and thank you for watching.